I do not know a better name to call you, maker of universe, maker of universe. I do not know how to explain you unexplainable, you unexplainable. Maker of universe, maker of universe. I do not know how to explain. You are unexplainable. You are unexplainable. You bigger than all my thoughts. You bigger than my mind. You greater than the greatest. Oh God, you made the world to be creator of existence. All the glory is yours, Yahweh. You are the greatest. You are the greatest. For you. Nothing. You hold me all together. You hold me all together. For without you, I can't move a mountain. My life is meaningless. Hallelujah. My life is meaningless. Set tonight. Bigger than my mind. You crater. You crater than the greatest. You, all power belongs to you. Who can be compared to you? To make a yeah, you're indescribable. There's no way to describe you, God. Nobody can describe you, God.
giving adoration, for being good to us, for being faithful in everything he has done and continue to do in our lives. We can rest in him, we can trust in him, we can depend on him, we can look to him, the altar and the finisher of our faith. We know that every good thing he has started is going to finish it. We can trust him with our lives. We can trust you, we can depend on you, we can look to you, the altar and the finisher of our faith this morning. We bless God for being good to us. As we're about to go to prayer water aloud, uh, one of God's choices seven to minister God's word to us today, preparing us for what the Lord is about to do in our lives in a special way. We give him praise and glory. We give the Lord honor and adoration. Oh, yes. Yeah. My life is meaningless Such a life Be good in my way You're greater You're greater than the best Oh, you find some you Oh, power belong to you Oh, power belong to you Who can be compared to you God To make all, yeah. You're in this crime There's no way to describe it, God. Nobody can describe it, God. You are bigger than the biggest. You are greater than the greatest. Don't come and compare to you, God. Yeah. For you are the greatest Jesus. I am the I am the the I am the the I am the I Oh Lord my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all your hands are made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Yeah, for you deserve the glory, the honor. Joe Mary leaders in worship this morning. I don't know where you are, but open your spirit and allow the Lord to minister to you this morning. This is your time, this is your season. God is set to do some wonderful and great things in your life this morning. Uh, we know that in the past days we've been talking about recovery. This is truly your time of recovery. Can you live your voice and worship God and give him praise this morning as you look to him, the altar and the finisher of our faith. Live your voice and begin to bless him. So great, Nobody there is no one else Nobody like you. Else like you. you. Hey. I said, There is no one else so like you. For oh, you are great, for oh, you to be because so great. I said, There is no one else like you. My Lord, to I said for you are great, oh God, you're the best, because of bread, oh take the glory this morning, no God compared to you, I said, there is no one else like you, oh you are great, oh you're the best, God so great.
Great are you, Lord. All Joe Mella leading us in worship this morning. Can you join your voice? Let's minister to him. Great are you, Lord. worshiping and we are exalting his name this morning we want to bow down and declare his praise and worship our can i get some worshipers in the house and worship let your voice yahweh 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 We bow down and worship. I say, we bow down. You can sing your Bless his name. Yes, we praise him. We bless him. Yeah. Yes, sir. We worship him this morning. We give him praise this morning. We glorify him this morning. There's no God compared to him. No God has ever been like him. No God will ever be like him. We give him glory. We give him worship. We give him adoration. We thank him for being a good, wonderful, glorious, and mighty God. A God we can trust and depend on. 
This morning, we thank God for all of you that are watching. For every walks of life, we thank God that you can take up the opportunity and take up the time to be with us, to show yourself strong, to show yourself mighty, to show yourself powerful, to show yourself great on our behalf. We've come tonight, to be this morning, to uh, appreciate God, to thank God for being good to us, for blessing us, for ministering to us, and for fulfilling our heart desire. We know that the God who has started this good work in us is going to finish it. That the Bible says he's the author and he is the finisher of our faith. This morning, we want to thank God for all of you that are watching, all of you that are viewing from different parts of the world. We want to welcome you to morning dew this morning. We believe that the fresh dew of heaven is pouring upon you. God is set to visit you, to bless you, to change you, to do something awesome and something mighty on your behalf. God is set to transform you. God is set to revive you. God is set to restore you. God is set to establish you and show himself faithful on your behalf. And so you ought to show yourself faithful this morning by opening your heart and your spirit to worship God, to bless him, to adore him, and to live his name. We thank God for all of you that could to show yourself and prove yourself mighty on behalf of the Lord, giving your time, your commitment, and everything you do to his glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name. This morning we are continuing in our study in the era of recovery. Yeah, recovery. We believe that today it is a time of great recovery. Great recovery in the kingdom. Wabakashanda. Great recovery. Wonderful recovery. Kingdom recovery. Recovery for every form of bondage. Recovery from every manipulation of the enemy. Recovery for everything the enemy have done to affect our life negatively. Yeah. Oh yeah. Recovery. That's it. That's what we want to talk about. That's what we want to talk about. Recovery. Yeah. God is set. And you know we've been we've been sharing on the the, 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 the topic, my season of recovery. And the last time we were here, we began talking about recovery. We said when we talk about we talk about taking time to talk about the, the topic and the theme, my season of recovery. We say when we talk about mine, it refers to the person themselves, it was felt to uh, their own lives, and uh, the person was speaking. And so, if you were saying mine, you are talking about you, your season, and the season speaks of a period of time that suitable things take place and uh, the proper things take place. It's a, it's a suitable time. Everybody talk about uh, 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 season is up, it talks about a suitable time, the proper time. Or a given period in the year where certain things happen and where certain conditions are put in place. Also, recovery speaks of going back to the original state. And so that's just the foundation for what we begin talking and discussing. And for our key text this, this morning, we want to continue with uh, uh, John chapter 8, 29 to 36, and Exodus 2, 1 to 11. We want you to be very, very cognizant and want you to be conscious of these truths. Of these very things that we've discussed and we've uh, we've mentioned in our 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 our, our, our early broadcast when we talked the last time on the season of recovery and i want to say to you this morning i could call you a prophetic word call you a word of encouragement call you a word of wisdom i want to let you know that this is your season of recovery this is a time that god will do some great and strange things in your life that will cause people to marvel that will cause men to wonder that will cause people to so to ask what is happening, how did this take place? And you are going to be a living testimony of God's goodness in this season. And so uh, as we speak of the issue of recovery, we said to be exact that uh, 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 salvation is a recovery package. When you speak of salvation, each of us that are given our life to Christ, we have experienced what you call salvation. And salvation is God's or a uh, uh, recovery package, all right? And to man, original uh, is is is, is uh, salvation is a recovery package into God's original plan and purpose for our lives and the environment. So when you hear God talking about salvation, it is His original plan, His original plan and purpose as it relates to our lives and the environment. It's a package God put together. When God found out that we are going far away from Him. We are lose our place to him. We are we are taking our own way. God did not allow us to have our way. He did not allow things to go the way we want to go. 
God decided that there was going to be a shift and a change in the situation. And God chose that in the midst of the change, what he was going to do is that he was going to make sure that he bring us back to that original state he meant when he started the purpose, when he made the earth and he made the universe. And so God put together a package. That package was to restore, it was to bring us back to God's original position for our lives. And that's the reason why as we walk with God from day to day, and we seek God from time to time, it is important that we understand that the whole process of us knowing God, coming to know Him, to serve Him, and walk in His precept, is not just our making, it is His making. If the songwriter say, He came down to our level when we could not get up to Him, when we could not do suddenly, when we could not reach when we could not find our own righteousness, he brought his righteousness for us. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, in 17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and all things have, been, uh, have become new. Then verse 18 saying, And God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, and not imputing men's sins unto them. And then he said, Now are we ambassadors of Christ, and we are, been, uh, are selected to be able to, to witness for God. And then it goes to 21 and say, He who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. That means He did not have sin. But because of us, because He had a package, because He had a recovery plan, He did not want us to stay in the state we're in. I want to say to you tonight, I don't know what state your life is in. I don't know what challenges you are having. I don't know what are the things you are going through. But I want to say to you this very night, that whatever the enemy has planned, whatever the enemy has put together to use and hold you hostage and affect your life and make sure you don't fulfill God's plan for your life, I reject it. I refuse it. I pray it's not going to stand. I pray it's not going to work. I pray it's not going to be fulfilled. I pray God's plan, will, and desire, the package that God put together, the original package that God intended when He when you when you save you and when you save me, when you put together, when you when you allow Jesus to go to the cross, that package will be fulfilled in your life. And some of us have come to the kingdom, we have come to know the Lord, but have not been able to walk in the fullness of that package. We have not allowed God's grace to work in and through us like it's supposed to work. Tonight, I want to pray for you. I want to agree this morning, rather, I want to agree with you that indeed God's grace will be made available to you in a mighty way. That God's power will be poured out in your life in a mighty way. That God's change will come to you and you will be able to excel and rise to that place. And you will come to understand that it's not about you. It's not about what you can do. It's what He can do through you. And you will open up yourself and make the decision to submit to Him and allow Him lead you and allow Him guide you and allow Him direct you and allow Him fulfill His purpose and plan in your life. I want to encourage you to, this morning. I want to encourage you mightily this morning. And I pray that by the Spirit of God, you will listen to God, you will submit to God, you will lead you to God, and you allow God to show Himself mighty on your behalf. You allow God to show Himself great on your behalf. You allow God to manifest His glory and power in your life. The second part of the statement I read, I said, An understanding of this puts you in an advantageous position and ahead of others. That means when you get to understand that salvation is God's recovery package for mankind to restore them to his original purpose and plan what it does for you is that it puts you in the place of advantage number one it gives you assurance assurance of your identity that you came from God and you are going back to God one number two that you have a father a father you are not bastard you have a father you belong to a kingdom you have authority you have a whole kingdom back in you the things you that when you pray you are sure of your prayers when you do things you are sure about what you do do you know there are many believers today who are never sure about the things they do the things they get involved in they are not sure they don't have any assurance because they don't really believe the salvation story they don't really believe the salvation plan they don't believe it's for them they don't believe that god really did this thing they see it as a myth that some will call it a myth. They appear as some, you know, some story put together, something good to make people feel good. You know, uh, 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 one, uh, one, uh, 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 a, 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 a leader, let's say that, a religion is the opium of the people. That was his perception. 
He felt that indeed, you know, when you take when you get involved with the things of God, it pushes you in a false way. When you really, and he said religion, and he didn't see a relationship with God. But when you have a relationship with God, it puts you in a place of advantage, it puts you in a place of stability, it puts you in a place of assurance, it puts you in a place of authority, it puts you in a place of understanding, not acting. You know, the Bible says the days we are in. Many will have the form of godliness, but will deny the power thereof. Now, you can have the form of godliness and, let, and make people feel, make people believe and feel that you are a child of God and you are serving God and whatever. But listen to me. When you come to know God, there are rudiments, there are principles, there are things, there are fundamental truths you ought to learn. That's why many of us need to sit on the people to mentor us and teach us the rudiments of the kingdom. Because today... Everyone thinks the kingdom is all about, you know, healing, deliverance, miracles. Those things are good. They are all part of the kingdom. But beyond them, there are other issues of the kingdom that we need to understand. Because God can bless you. God can open doors for you. It takes God no time to elevate you, increase you, and give you access to the opportunities of the earth. The problem is not you getting there. The problem is you staying there. There are many God has raised. Many. Many people that God has raised. He has raised, but guess what? They have not been able to maintain. They have not been able. They have not been able to maintain what God gave them. They have never been able to maintain what God gave them. They have never been able to walk in the fullness of what God intended to do with their life. They have never been able to do it. So many God raised them, gave them access to people, to places, to different things, but they did not maintain it. They could not keep it. Why? Because they are lied. We're not set to walk with God. They wanted the form of God. And they don't want to be a part of the show. They wouldn't want to, to you know, the people know, okay, yes, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I go to church. Oh, yes, I'm a man of things of God. Listen to me. In the days we are in, the days are getting evil. You can't walk in the form of godliness. You need the real power. And I want to say to you in this season, if you're one of those who have lost the power, power that's coming back to your life. This is your season of restoration. If your, your baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want to be unto, 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 with no power and nothing. Guess what? But that baptism is about to receive fire. I say it's about to receive fire. It's about to receive fresh fire from the kingdom of God. It's about to, to go to a, to a new level. If you are bent down, you read the Bible, you don't get understanding. You are about to dive into God's truth and partake of the wisdom of God at a level you never experienced and never seen. That is what is about to happen. And I want to encourage you to, to know that I'm not just saying words. I'm saying these things believing that the God that we serve is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. And if you are there this morning, an enemy is telling you, uh, the apostle is not talking to you. You, you for you, but you blew everything or you just scattered the whole thing. God was using you, God was working with you, and you just got messed up that destroying everything. Now you can't, you ain't got face to go before God. Listen to me. The Bible says we say we will have our sin, we lie, and the truth is not on us. It's about if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all the righteousness. Listen to me, God wants you back. Even if you miss it, even if you got off course, even if you, you've gone off tangent, you can get back on course. You can get back in place. You can get back. Even if you went to the extreme, you can get back to the place of balance and be, still be able to fulfill this kingdom assignment. I'm talking to you this morning, wherever you are, whether you are in a bad state, whether you are in a depressed state, then you are in a giving up state. I pray this morning for your recovery. I pray for your restoration. I see you coming back. I see you serving the Lord better than ever before. I see the glory of God be restored to your life. You know, Listen to me today, I want you to understand that this walk in the kingdom, when we get to heaven, you will not be able to give excuse and tell God, oh God, the reason why I couldn't do this, it was because so and so person did so and so, and they person discouraged me, and they person made me not to serve you. No one has the right to discourage you for serving God. That's why God has his word. If you see something that is not okay, if you see somebody walking out of the way, that doesn't give you the right to walk out of the way. If you see somebody making error, you don't go and make error. You don't, if you see people are, are taking the wrong way, you don't go say, you're not practicing religion, you're walking with God. So now I hear some people saying, you know, you know, I really serve the Lord, but I need people to discourage me. I really trying to do this with God, but people, listen, in life, there will always be people detouring, people making mistakes and people doing things. If you allow the errors of people to make you an error, you made a serious mistake in your life. And I say to you this morning, if you are listening to me, if you have become an error because of the error of other people, you better correct yourself. 
Because listen to me, there's no justification for you going to error because somebody else went into error. Because why is it true that we are supposed to be an example of God's word? The word of God is given us. When someone started ministry, it was not everybody we met in ministry that encouraged it. We're not everybody we met in ministry that was an example of the word of God. But we purposed by God's word that we were going to obey God's word. We we're going to follow God's word. Yes, we were looking at other people's example, but they were not. Our Bible. Our Bible is the scripture. They were only there to help us. They were there to lead us. In fact, the Bible is clear to you and it tells you that what? The treasure, the treasure, the anointing, the grace of God, the power of God. It's in empty vessels. It's in empty vessels. You know, it's in empty vessels. The, 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 the power of God, the grace of God, the glory of God is in empty vessels. And we need to understand that. We need to understand it. We need to get to that place to know that God is doing great things and mighty things to his glory and honor. We need to understand that. These are issues. These are things we need to know. These are things we need to fulfill so that we are able to accomplish God's plan. We are able to accomplish God's will. We are able to do the things that will bring glory and honor to the name of God. And so I pray for you today that your restoration will be shown. That your restoration will be fulfilled. That your restoration will be established. And God will prove himself faithful on your behalf. Oh yes, I believe it this morning. And listen to me. If you are going to do this, there are things you need to understand. There are things you need to understand. There are things you need to understand. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. And you are Alpha and Omega. As you were.
Earlier uh, speaking and talking about recovery, we said that uh, it is our season of recovery. And we talk about God's original plan, God's plan of, uh, of recovery is salvation. Salvation was God working on a recovery plan to bring us back into his sheepfold. And to recover, there are things that need to be understood. Number one thing that you have to consider if you're going to recover is that you must discover and conquer the battle of life or, or your family. The battle of life in your family. In life, there are going to be positive things you will have to fight for and there will have to be negative things you got to fight against. And the sooner you discover that and make the decision that you are going to subdue those negative things and you are going to take hold of those positive things, that will be the beginning of the great change in your life. No change in your life is by accident. No change in your life is by coincidence. Every change you will ever experience in your life will be based on conscious decision, a commitment to make sure you do those things that are required by the principles of life and also by life standards. Life has a standard. I was sharing, I think on one of my podcasts, and I was sharing that life is not fun fair, it's warfare. And you have to discover what are those battles I have to fight? What are those battles? What are those positive battles and what are those negative battles? The positive battles are devices. Like you may come from a family where there is a sin problem with drunkenness, with womanizing, with immorality, with, with instability, and you know, with, uh, 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 with infidelity, uh, with idolatry, and the list goes on. We can just go naming and naming, and indiscipline, arrogance, you know, and, and everything, everything else, every kind of vice. You find it is a major issue. You will have to choose and tell yourself, say, I must overcome this, I must overcome that, I must overcome the others, and I must overcome this thing. And you may also become from a family where no one, people don't excel to great height. People don't go for, for great things. People settle for mediocratic issues in life and society. You have to make up your mind that I'm breaking this benchmark. I'm going beyond this. I'm achieving what nobody has ever achieved. I'm accomplishing what no one has ever accomplished. I'm, and when you start to talk about it, guess what? You're going to have people clapping for you. Sometimes it's going to be an issue of mockery. People will mock you. People will laugh at you. People will make fun of you. They will think that you are joking. They will think that you are playing. They will think that you are making jest of the issues of life. But guess what? You are serious like nothing. Amen. I know you are there this morning. Yeah, maybe marriage may not be working. Your relationship not working. Trying to do business not going the way it's expected to go. Probably trying to get involved. Maybe just about to go to school and everything turned the other way around. Maybe uh, your health issues. And we could go and listen to them. But listen to me. There is nothing you go to in life that is beyond the reach of God and as I speak to you this morning I want to let you know nothing you are going to is beyond the reach of God and I come into your home this morning with God's word to let you know that the God that we serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask things or even imagine with him all things are possible and at even your situation your most difficult situation this morning is possible in the sight of God and God will give you a favorable answer a favorable result a result that will make you celebrate a result that will make you laugh, a result that will make you glorify God and honor Him for being faithful to you. So, if you're going to win the battles of, if you are going to 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 go through restoration as a child of God, a restoration would be possible. I want to let you know this morning that indeed you must, as a child of God, discover and conquer. Discover. So you must do an evaluation. You must do a check. You must do analysis. You must invest. In him I trust. My life is in his hands. My life is in your hands. Oh Jesus, you are a miracle working God. Yes, sir. You are a miracle working God. Oh, yeah. You are a miracle God. Oh, someone. Worship the Lord with me. Hallelujah, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. That's who you are. You are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. That's who you are tonight, oh God. You are 
Someone help me worship him this morning. He has his name. All sufficient. El Shaddai, El Aliyah, Jehovah Sipha, Jehovah Sekiro, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Kadesh, Jehovah Rohi. We bless you this morning. We praise you this morning. We glorify you this morning. Ah, Aya, Shabakata, Shadarabaya Kasata. Yeah, yeah. You are Yahweh, Alpha, and Omega. That's who you are. That's why I know that the story is going to change. That's why I believe that it will not remain the way it is. That's why I believe that God will show up. That's why I believe there will be recovery. Because with God on my side, I will discover it. He will open my eyes. The thing I can't even find them physically. He will open my eyes to see them. He will reveal them to me. And then he will give me the ability. He will give me the backing to make sure that I overcome and I be victorious in whatever he has called me to accomplish. Whatever my heart desire is and the change I want to bring. And I want to say to you this morning, you will open your eyes. Begin today, there are things your eyes will open to see. Begin that understanding you will begin to have. And not only that, the grace, the authority, the power to accomplish, to fight, to win will rest upon you. I see you winning. I see you winning. You may have been a loser all your life, but this morning there's an anointing coming on you. There's a grace coming on you that is changing you into another person. It's changing you into another figure. It's changing you into another species. And your results are going to be different. Oh, yes. He is Yahweh. He is Yahweh. He is Alpha. He is Omega. Oh, yeah. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And so tonight, as we discover a purpose to conquer the battles of the family, there are things that are going to happen. There are things you must understand. Number one, you must know that God is looking for deliverers and you are one. You must know that. God is looking for what? Deliverers and you are one. Someone need to shout it this morning to themselves. I am a deliverer. I am God's deliverer. I am God. Say it again. I like to say it seven times. I am God's deliverer. 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 That's who you are. You are God's deliverer. In Ezekiel 22, 28 to 30, he talked, he said that. In 30, he said, I search for a man. He said the nation had gone astray. God has found you for your community. I say God has found you. Can someone say this morning, God has found me. He has found me. This is a season of coming. Even right now, if your life is not in your order, I see God putting it in order. You know why? Because you are God's deliverer. You are the one God is encountering. On. You are that Ezekiel 30 that God couldn't find, that he has found in you, for you, for your family, for your generation, for your nation. You are that deliverer. I know right now there are a lot of things happening around us that is leading to despondency, that is causing people to feel there's no way out. Listen to me. We are God's deliverer to this nation. There are things that will not happen here because we are here. There are things that will not persist because we are here. There are things that will not manifest because we are here. God will be faithful to us. God will prove himself. God will show himself mighty. His glory will be revealed. His power will be made manifest and we will accomplish God's dream for our life. I see it happening and I see it happening quick. If you are there you will shout me amen and, we, and the amen will be a strong amen it will be a powerful amen oh yes oh yes i want you to say the amen like you mean it say the amen like you mean it oh yeah this morning say the amen like you mean it yeah you are god's deliverer you are god's deliverer huh if you will conquer the battle if you will discover the situation to change it 
to bring what? Will effect the transformation. Guess what? You must understand that you are God's deliverer. Hallelujah. You must understand that you are God's deliverer. And this morning, that's where I like to stop. I like to stop here this morning. For you knowing that you are God's deliverer. When we come tomorrow morning, we will talk about knowing the challenges you are faced with and solving it. You must be able to know it. You must know the challenges. You must be able to know it. All right? Because other discovery, you have been able to know this. Child, you got to know it. You know, I try to talk about it, but we'll spend more time digging the rate. And then we'll, we'll, if we have time tomorrow, we're going to shifting your spiritual capacity. That's a whole term of advice I'm going to dive today. We'll get finished it tomorrow. We'll, we'll continue the next day. We'll connect the next morning. And we'll go from one day to another. But I want to let you know that recovery is your portion. You are going to recover. Whether you are afflicted, whether you are down, whether you are missed opportunity, whatever it is, that is going to be recovered. Whether you are hurting, you are going to pain a down. coming to pass and I see happening in his to the glory of God and I say to you this morning you will not disappoint God you will not disappoint God you will you will be a fulfillment of God's prophecy in your time and in your season good the name of God will be exalted because of you the name of God will be praised because of you the But guess what? I've never known the Lord. I've not even tried to get close to Him. This morning, I'd like to give you the opportunity. The Bible says, if you will confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. As simple as that. And if you can just do that.